Anything off, anything like, I'm not gonna ask any personal questions, but anything <laughs> off the mark you don't wanna talk about? No. Nah. Excellent. Guys, welcome, See to Eat Review here with Brad, 612 Brewing. How are you, Brad? Good, mate, how are you? What are you drinking there, bud? Uh, just the pale ale today. Pale ale, that looks nice and clear, isn't it? Yeah. This is a little bit more hazy, guys. This is a New England IPA. The Goliath, are you getting your names from the giant names? Yeah, so all of our beers are named after uh, nicknames that I've had in the past. So oh, really? Sort of there you go. Take the piss out of me. So guys, see, 612 Brewing, uh, what's the suburb I'm in, sorry? St. Agnes? Agnes? Yeah, yeah, it is St. Agnes. Why did you pick St. Agnes? Are you around this area? Yeah, we live around the corner from here. So. Oh, there you go. And were you just a home brewer who decided to uh, set up yeah. shop? Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, I've been brewing for about 10 years. Yep. And uh, the missus and I, uh, we joked for a few years ago about um, if uh, either of us got laid off or made redundant or anything, we'd, we'd open a brewery. Then yeah. sort of uh, February last year, the missus got uh, laid off and, yeah. and here we are. Really? Yeah. And then COVID hit. Yeah, and then COVID <laughs> hit, so she couldn't get another job. So oh, really? it worked out perfectly for me. So this location, how did you find it? So you got a gym next door, you can hear that. you got the yep. coffee bar in there. Yeah, yep. so um, we, we started scouring the area because there's no breweries up here. Yep. Um, and then we sort of come across this place, we kept driving past and going, oh, we should go have a look. Yep. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we sort of nabbed it up as quick as we could. Once we'd come in here, it was a, a blank slate, there was nothing in here. So um, it was it made it very easy to sort of fit and, out the way we wanted. And what every uh, beer, craft beer, like Instagram or like me goes, is like, why haven't you been to 612? My in-laws are just around the corner, yeah, like right. robbery. And I was like, well, I pick up my kids, and if I come here and have a few, I can't sort of pick up my kids. So it's sort of that evil yeah. part there that I'm yeah. sort of stuck with. But yeah, sure. I've always been fascinated to visit. I see you've done a few media rounds as well. Yeah. A few magazine. My goodness, yeah. you've been popular. You've yeah, been we um, we were very lucky through uh, beer and barbecue. They were doing yep. a lot of that work for us, and um, just kept putting our name up. Mm -hmm. We just kept saying yes. So. Um, it, it's been great. We've had yeah, a few articles. We yep. had Stephen Marshall out here, yep. um, things like that. So we've been pretty that happy. Is, what, what was Stephen Marshall doing out here? Uh, he was just doing the rounds with Small the local business. MP. Yep. Oh, beautiful. Um, so, what got you interested in craft beers anyway? Were um, you just like a normal West End drinker or something and you go, oh, I can do better than this? Uh, yes and no. Okay. Um, I, I moved to America to play basketball for oh. five and a half years. And my, my next question is, why aren't you playing basketball? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so... Um, and while I was over there, I had sort of, uh, you know, my craft beer epiphany. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Dogfish Heads, 90 minute IPAs, yep. just a great beer and I had it and then yep. I was obsessed. Um, then I moved home and I saw that my dad was brewing in the shed. Yep. Uh, brewing 4X and, and, oh, uh, and the likes. The lagers yeah. and the bitters. Uh, I can't do <laughs> oh And then um, we sort of, I got kind of stuck into it and we were all brewing and, yep. um, and then I made a terrible, awful beer. I tried to make my first oh, really? IPA. It was disgusting. Yeah. Uh, and what did you do wrong? Do you know what you did wrong? Oh, fermentation control, <laughs> oxygen. <laughs> yeah, you name it, I did yes. it. So, um, and so I started researching it, looking yep. into what happened and why, and uh, then went down the rabbit hole. And ten years later, this place emerged. There so. you go. And you've become a scientist, I saw, don't you? Yeah. I can't yeah. believe, like, just people I know, just like, uh, they have to become scientists to do that. You have to make sure you. you temperatures and all your levels are right yeah i look at it, i go i just drink beer you can do the hard <laughs> stuff here you know what i mean yeah no that works out well for me whereabouts in america were you uh a bit all over the place okay uh, a bit in the south and mostly in the midwest I okay. played basketball so and how come that finish just wasn't getting anywhere for you? Uh, I played college ball. I had an opportunity to try out for a few um, NBA teams and yep. things like that. But I oh, never... That's a nice beer story, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, I could have tried out for <laughs> sixes. <laughs> but um, I just kind of lost the passion and the drive for mm -hmm. it. And um, I was about ready to come home. It was yep. a long time away from home. So it was yep. about, uh, you know, coming down and, and seeing my family again. Yep, that's nice. And the missus is happy for you to do all this yeah well she she does everything behind the scenes she's oh, basically legend the, give her a shout out yeah what? yeah so ali my wife she does ali, absolutely well everything yes. um the, she's the reason we've got beer on tap she's the reason this place still remains open so what a legend my job here is just to serve beers and make yeah. the beers so and, and what days are you open here you're not open seven days a week no so thursday of... friday saturday yeah. sunday um just sort of uh, while we're still getting bigger we've got such mm -hmm. a small brew house here yeah um that it just we can't make enough beer to keep up most of the time. How so. many tanks you got? So we've got five tanks. We've yep. got uh, one 500 litre tank and four 200 litre tanks. Yep. So um, 
ridiculously small yeah. um, to be in, in this industry. Oh, but that's what I like, because I've been to Mismatch, and I've toured there, I've yeah. done a Prancing Pony and been there, and then I went to Power Life and tour around there, you're like, wow, the yeah. schedule's different. And I've seen like Tony at the Suburban Brew as well, mm -hmm. and they're a little smaller again, yeah. and they go out to get their can and stuff. I saw you try to do some, was it canning or bottling during COVID? We did that try. That didn't go so well. No, we did try canning, um, but uh, we found that with homebrew equipment, doesn't necessarily work on a commercial scale. Yep. Um, we had uh, lockdown happened, yep. uh, and then we went to canned beer, uh, and then uh, the Tuesday when we were starting, power went out for seven hours. Oh, so we that's right, I remember reading all this. My and, heart broke for you, bud. <laughs> and then we finally got some cans out, and then um, the, the chuck on the can seamer slipped um, yep. after about 400 cans, and it was gonna be three and a half, four hours before we could get it fixed and checked. And it just, it just wasn't making me any more comfortable. So I'd rather not put beer on the market I'm yeah. not happy with. Yeah. Um, so we went a different route, we went growlers and squealers, which yep. is sort of what everybody That's else That's becoming does. big now, isn't it? It's really... Oh, like... well, there's a few reasons, I think. Um, as far as a cost perspective, okay. it's um, a lot easier. Yep. Um, you know, canning machines are, are quite expensive, bottling machines are quite expensive. Yep. Um, they're also reusable. Oh, that's much so, better for the environment. Yeah. yeah, I heard about growlers and squiddlers in, in America like yonks ago, yeah. and I was like, we don't have them here. Like, and then suddenly I'm starting to see them come out, come out more, and it's like, okay, that's a more better way to do it, I guess. It's, um, it's good, especially for those sort of once-off releases and things that yep. you're not, um, we're not selling uh, in takeaways, well, particularly us, yep. we're not selling anything in takeaways, but mm -hmm. um, for those who are, yeah, doing sort of tap room only releases, it's a good way for people to get it in their hands if they can't spend the time at the tap room. What's your favorite beer to make? What's your favorite beer to drink? My favorite beer to make whoa, is probably our stout. Mm -hmm. um, I just, it smells so good first thing in the morning. Is when it I'm coffee here. or chocolatey? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. So um, it's a big coffee hit and then yep. it smooths out into a bit of chocolate. But um, it's, it's a lot of fun to make. It's a pretty long process to make. Um, I've got to say, that's the, I thought you'd enjoy making the shorter process ones because they're easier. Uh, then, yeah. then you've got the, the ones that get more complex as you go. I, I was guessing as the, more, the percentage goes up in the beer, the complexity sort of rises. Yeah, as well. it certainly does, but I think there's uh, sort of a rhythm you get into when you're brewing. And mm -hmm. um, I'm here first thing in the morning by myself, not with anybody. So yep. it's just time for my brain to do what it needs to do. Yep. And, um, it's basically my relaxing moment. Now, my beer to drink, I guess. At the moment, we have a really cool coffee porter on. Uh, okay. With uh, so the the cafe at the front is actually a coffee roastery. The coffee baron's gonna say you must use a coffee baron. Yeah. Must use yeah. That. So they, uh, I made the beer. They tried it. Uh, the next day, they roasted up some special beans for it. Oh. A week later, it went in the beer. Um, and so it's a very closed loop here, yep. which is awesome. Yep. But it's four percent. It's super easy to drink. That even is in the low. Warmer. Yeah. That is so low. How did you get that so low? I couldn't see a stout so low there. Yeah. So it's um, the idea was as the weather gets warmer, yep. is something a little bit easier to drink. But you know, we're we're teetering on the edge of it being warm like today, or, yeah. or freezing cold like the other day. So <laughs> well, the Sunday is going to be down to 14 yeah. after today's 27. So that's what yeah. You're so feel. you can drink it on the whole gambit because it's going to give you different bits and pieces. Throughout. Because I just tried the Four Hearts Brewing Stout, and that was 5.5. I went, yeah. oh, that's really easy to drink. It's really low. Mm. You got me a four. I was like, wow, yeah. that is fantastic. Oh, that's going to be good. Yeah. There. So our, our standard stout is five percent. Yeah. Um, the the copper porter is at four. So yeah. Um, we, we make not a huge amount of high alcohol beers here. Yep. That being said, we've got a double IPA coming out pretty soon. Okay. Um, it's more, uh, we found that our market likes a, a low ABV beer. Yep. Um, a lot of them, whilst they live close, still have to drive. Yeah, I guess it's a, tri it's a driving sort of place here, the location, not really a walking place. Yeah, it's not really. I mean, we're close enough to Tea Tree Plaza that yep. you could walk. Yep. Um, but we find a lot of people just park up and, and have yep. a view and then go which home. Is, so. Which is a sensible go away around it. Mm. Now, how, how, what's the highest percentage beer? You see you've got the double coming out. How high is that going to be? That's going to be 8.4%. Do you know that before you do it? Or does that just sort of fall, oh, that's my perfect balance. That's, that beer tastes right. That's hey. what it's going to be. To me, it was kind of where I was aiming, 8.4, okay. 8.5. Um, and oh, we pretty much nailed, I think, that flavour, yep. um, the mouthfeel and everything on the yep. head. Like, it, I didn't want something that was going to be sickly sweet yep. um, or big and thick, but it, it has those big mouthfeel, mm -hmm. um, big punch of hops, yep. uh, those flavours, and it's kind of melded together. Um, it's always a risk to do it on a commercial scale without trial batching first, but yep. I had um, 
I had a lot of help from a lot of brewers around the place who yep. gave me advice and um, helped me build the recipe. So, um, you know, Stewie at Union Bridge and, and okay. Paul from Beer No Evil both. both Beer No Evil, yeah. I love those guys. Huh? So we've got their double IPA on tap at the moment. Um, and so I had the first mouthful of that and I said, dude, I've got to make my own. Can you help oh, me? That's and he did. Good. So, um, I found out goes, a lot of small brewers work together. Oh yeah, it's great. and that's what I like about it as well. Yeah, it's absolutely great. We've yeah. had a we've had a great time. Oh, well, I've had a great time. Yeah, um, they're probably getting sick of my sick messages, of... but <laughs> I'm just looking at doing this. Yeah. Yes. So who else are you carrying on tap here? Did you say you see? You got... Just at the moment, we've okay. got Beer No Evil. Yeah. Um, we are adding two more taps yep. to to our bar. So there'll be one dedicated for cider. So we have yep. um, Lenswood Cider Company. Oh yes, I know um, them. Yeah. So we we put their their cider on because we love it. Yep. Um, and then we'll have a dedicated guest tap, which will will cycle through. Okay. Um, at the moment, we're mostly aiming on uh, breweries that don't have tap rooms. Yep. Uh, particularly through COVID, it's a pretty challenging time. Yes. So, uh, sort of chasing them up and uh, getting some of their beers on. Uh, not only does it help us out, but it's a good chance for them to to have their beers out where people are going to drink it. Were you scheduled for the beer and barbecue festival when it was cancelled, and you brewed up a whole stack and had a whole lot of beer? Uh, we did. Um, it wasn't too bad, uh, to be honest, because we're forever running out of beer here. Yep. Okay. Uh, so it was a really good opportunity to go, oh, well, maybe we have enough stock to yep. get us through um, oh, that's a couple good. of months. Yeah, because I caught a lot of them caught short, and it, it, it broke my heart. Yeah. It broke my heart because I won tickets, <laughs> but it also broke my heart because I don't care about me, but the brewers who brewed up extra, because yeah. that's where they make yeah. their money, guys. And we're hearing that, it's like, dude. And was... I talked to Hidden Brew Tap House, and they said, the amount of people are offering them kegs after kegs, like, we can't sell it because yeah. they're going to be closed for seven days. That, that's... Just one of the things that you've 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 grown up in that industry now because yeah. all you know is COVID, don't you? That's really? it. Yeah. So we opened December last year, so right uh, after that uh, circuit break lockdown. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, obviously that lockdown around beer and barbecue was our first major uh, major stall. Yeah. Um, but I think I think breweries in South Australia are resilient. Yeah. Good drinkers in South Australia mm. are happy to get around them. Yes. Um, I mean the 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 pseudo beer and barbecue that. Um, Blackwood Brew House and Beer No Evil did. Yep. Uh, that, from what I heard, got a great response. Yep. And it was a lot of people out there, so it's been really good. And then uh, takeaways again, people having deliveries um, through lockdown yep. and just buying cans from bottle shops or direct from the brewers is, is helping it's them out. It's so. always nice. Isn't it? That's why I like doing direct from the brewers because I don't like to cut out the middleman. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even yeah. when I go to restauranting, my mom goes, I want to get Uber Eats. I'm like, no, I'm going to go there and pick it up because it's just, it's a little thing, yep. but man, it makes me feel so much yeah, better. No, I totally get it. So here's a little little point of contention. I was down the rabbit hole of the Stone and Wood being sold off to yes. yep. Lion Nathan yep. last night. I, I can see where the passion is there from. I'm a craft beer drinker, I want to support South Australia, I want to support South Australian beers. But dude, if I'm offered ten million dollars to, the, you're not going to turn it down. No, are it's, you? Uh, it was it's funny. Um, so when things like that happen, people come in here and you know they they come to me and they're like, this is an outrage. How could they? Yeah. And um, I, I've said from the beginning, I was like, everybody has a number. Yeah. Right? I love what I do. I would love to say that I will never be in a yeah. position to do that. However, if someone walks in with bag loads of cash, you you're know, you've got to, to at least think about it, right? And that's why I should give the guys, people some context. So uh, Lion Nathan just bought Fixation, they bought Two Birds, they bought Stone and Wood. The big contentious point with Stonewood, though, is Stonewood used to call out little brewers who sold out to yep. overseas company, and then Stonewood would have done it themselves. And that's where people are angry. And I can see that. You can't call like Boltar Brewing out and say, you've, you're a sellout when you've just done it and you've gone, well, I've got a reason to do it because we need to get bigger. Yeah. That's all cool. And I can understand because if you still buy their beers, you're still supporting jobs in Australia, but any profits are going to Japan, to Mitsubishi and stuff. Yeah. And that's what I was talking to my wife about. My wife doesn't talk about beer, but I just said, man, I'm so on the fence. Like, I want to support craft brewers. Yeah. I want my money to stay in Australia. But you come with a truckload of cash to buy it, dude. Yeah. Everyone would do it, man. You can't say you're not going to do it, you know what I mean? And you That's start right. off and you go, I just love beer, I just love beer. But, geez, you see dollar signs, you're going to do At it as well. At the end of the day, I think the good thing about the Australian craft beer industry is that there's a trajectory that we're all on. Yeah. You know, we're all fortunate if you're making good beer that you've got people buying it. Yeah. So you have to continue to make it because more people want it. So it's yeah. a su supply and demand. Yeah. Uh, and at some point, you can only supply so much without yep. additional funding. Uh, you know, you can go out to investors and things, but when you talk about a brewery going to cost you $100 million to build, 
Yeah. Um, there's only so much investors are yeah. going to put in, um, and that makes it quite challenging. And yep. then you have to consider other options. Pirate Life exactly the same. Yeah. They were in a position where they were selling so much beer they couldn't make enough. Yeah. Uh, and along come you know, Carlton United and and say, well, let's keep going. And in my opinion, I haven't had a Pirate Life beer that has um, that has gone backwards. I I just bought a maple bacon porter yesterday. Yeah, right. And I was just thinking, just because it interests me, and I've met the guys down there, and they're nice guys. And as I said. I'm still happy to go there because I know the jobs are still here, mm -hmm. but I do understand. I do understand that the profits are going overseas. Yeah. So if I am making a choice, it's one of those things. But as I said, you give me a maple bacon porter. I want to try that. That gets onto gimmick beers. How are you with gimmick beers? Are you into trying? I try them, um, but I'm, I'm yet to have one that's really gone. Oh, I'd like to try something like that. Um, but that's where I find Moondog Brewing. I'm happy to try one Moondog Brewing beer. And I'm, I'm not bagging them, guys. I try every one of their gimmick beers, the Pavlova beer, the Splice oh, beer. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think I go back for them, and that's, and that's where I get caught out. With the boozy fruit from Big Shed, with the bling from Bridge Road Brewers, yeah. I've gone back for that because that I can sit on all yeah. day. And I think there's, there's a market for it. I mean, Garage Project out of New Zealand. Oh, have, yes. Have built a business yes. around limited release <laughs> once off. Gimmick beers, yeah. Uh, I've got a mate of mine who's got uh, a shed full of shelves that he just buys every Garage Project. Oh, really? Yeah, loves it. Uh, then I've got another friend that does Dayton and another one that does Deeds. I yep. mean, they, these breweries are producing great beers. Yeah. The Garage Project's beer. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the one with the white can and yep. whatever. Beautiful beer. Yeah. Um, and they make that consistently and they yeah. make it consistently well. They also make some weird stuff that I've had and uh, gone. Never again. Not yeah. again. But I think. That's where a, I find with Urbanaut as well. Urbanaut yeah. with that little oh, the giant blender, can, yeah. the two. Yeah. My parents don't drink, my parents don't pick up beer. I brought them home the Urban Oil and I think it was a salted caramel and it was a sour, the pear yeah, sour. Yeah. And their minds exploded that I had two separate beers, they tried it separately, they tried it together. Yeah. I was like, oh, I don't want my parents drinking beer because it's like a fun little thing yeah, yeah. to do. And that's yeah, what you want to have fun drinking beer, you don't want to be yeah. all surly about it as well. I like, yeah. just drink this, but it is fun, but I wouldn't go back to it again, you know what I mean? So. I think I had that exact one, I went, this is a really cool yeah. novelty, I'd never do it again. Yeah. But, <laughs> and, and look, and, I, there's nothing to it, I'm just, I find that I, for our business, I'm not creative enough to be able to yeah. make different styles of beer. I'm not yeah. creative enough to go out and do a once-off, yeah. um, some weird and wonderful thing. Doesn't mean that I never will. Yeah. It doesn't mean that um, as we we hire more people, as we have more people come through who ask for those sorts of things. Yeah. Could be worth trying. Yeah. Um, but just at this point, I, I, it's just not my my. Uh, I my still see you at the first step. So you're yeah. making a name for you, getting your name out there, yeah. and just producing good beer that people want to come back for. Yeah. Yeah. Have you entered any of your beers into any of the competitions? I did um, the Beer Insider Awards. Yes. How'd they go? Um, I entered it in cans. Yes. Um, and was such a poor idea. Um, I feel like our beers definitely didn't do well because of the packaging okay. from my perspective. Yep. Um, and it was a really good eye-opener to... It's the first beers I've ever entered in yep. any competition, homebrew or otherwise. Yep. Um, but we got a lot of great feedback. Um, we got a lot of information that I've been able to use and make the beers better. So yep. I entered the Stout, yep. our Lanky Stout, and our Lurch West Coast IPA. Yep. Um, and both did well in their categories. Uh, didn't, didn't win any... Um, medals yep but uh, we did beat out a few breweries that I was a bit excited about oh, cool. um, uh, we beat Pirate Life uh, with one of with our West Coast and we actually beat Little Bangs uh, their, oh. their uh, foreign extra stout as yep. well um, but that's all you want to learn because I suppose it's hard because once you get into canning yeah. you've got to get design right as well yeah and so if we, I go to a I'm shopping with my eyes there for the design. Absolutely. So that's, it's, as I said, it's all, I, mean, I still see you at the base. Yeah. No offense, from a home brewer and you're the next step up. Yeah. And then you're going to learn, go, okay, as with your canning problem, over, you know, the COVID lockdown, I went, okay, this is a big stuff up. But yeah. at least you've learned from me, you know now what yeah, you can do. Yeah, so we released, we released 400 cans. Yeah. Uh, we sold them in three days. Yeah. Uh, we got some really great feedback from a lot of our cans, but I wasn't comfortable. And I yep. think the biggest thing in a brewery is, is being aware yep. and going, oh, okay, I'm not comfortable with what, what's yep. just happened, so we'll, we'll hold off until we can yep. do it right. Um, and that's the same as the awards. I didn't want to enter awards until I had people who the feedback I was getting I knew yep. I could trust. Yep. I knew it wasn't going to be uh, anything but constructive. Yep. 
and uh, since then we've gone leaps and bounds. Uh, we're in the process of, we've actually just purchased a new brew house. Yep. Um, so we're, we're upgrading from our 250 litre brew house to a 500. Gee, that's nice. Uh, yeah, which will mean we'll be able to make enough beer to actually get into all the markets that are asking oh, sweet. for it. So um, there's a, a mobile canning uh, yep. brew opening up here uh, this month actually. Okay. Um, and once our new equipment comes, we'll be chasing them up to, to get that going. So, are you still enjoying what you're doing? I or are you going? Okay. Ah, oh, damn! I've got to go up and go to work again. Or use his own. Okay, I've, I've loved doing this. Uh, I, I think there's been a few different pieces of it. Um, I still work full time. Yep. Uh, so, I find I love coming here. I love doing what yep. I do here. I find probably the, the bar side of it uh, whilst i love talking to people i could talk about beer until yes. my legs fall off yeah um it is quite taxing to work from 5 30 in the morning until 9 10 o'clock at night and you got a kiddo as well yes i have a two-year-old yes that's um, right i've seen him in photos yes and we have another one on the way oh congratulations so, um we're not only busy but crazy so yeah. um it's so what we've decided to do is we've actually just hired our first uh bar staff um, hello josh hi josh hey <laughs> there he is. Um, and uh, we're going to continue to do that um, and, and hire people to work the bar and, and to get into the industry up here because there is nothing up here. So There is nothing. As I said, I, I'm, I'm 10 minutes away and all I know is down south is mainly there's a big mm-hmm. thing. Uh, we're Shapeshift opening. They're opening up Vinden, yeah, 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 down, down the other side. way. I know Suburban Brew. I know Lady Borough. Yep. So the closest it, brewery to us is Little Bang in Stephanie. That's right, I'm, I'm around the corner from there. Yeah, so that's uh, 15 k's, yeah. 15.4 yeah. I think last last I looked at it. Um, between those and Brew Boys, yeah. we're kind of the only one out this side until you yes. get to the cross edge of Barossa. And that's what I mean, I, I, my eyes did light up when I heard you around there. And that's why I said everyone goes, why aren't you visiting there all the time? I went, I'm near Little Bang. Yeah. I always find myself in the city because I'm always around. I'm at Knoll, I'm at Hidden yeah. Brew. Yeah. I visit uh, Tony and Troy down at uh, Suburban yeah. Brew as well. And then you go up to the hills. I haven't even been to you regularly. Have you been there? for uh, such have, good things. It's beautiful. It's beautiful <laughs> up there. Um, it is. I, I, I like going there for breakfast. Oh, uh, really? Um, they've got a bakery in there as well. Oh, so. I've heard so many good things, but I find myself a prancing pony or mismatch yeah. goes down there. And as I said, I find it... I don't know the internal workings, but from the outside, I see everyone likes to work, t- not to work together, but everyone does help each other out. Oh, yeah. Like the guys from Beer No Evil, yeah. and like the Barossa Valley Brewing, I get along well with those guys. They're really nice guys as well. So it's just one of those where you go, if I need a hand, they'll pitch in and give you a hand as well. Absolutely. We've had we've had Tony from Suburban up here, yep. and uh, we've had people from all over, people from Little Bang. We've yep. got Cooper's Brewery guys that come in here and oh, drink cool. all the time, which oh, is kind of cool. On them. Um, so, you know, I think the industry is in a really cool position where everybody, in particularly in Adelaide, is happy to help each other out and shoot ideas. And, and that's why I do these videos, guys. I want to show you where all the little brewers are, <laughs> big and small, around South Australia, because it's always good to know where they are. And this one, St. Agnes, give it a shot. What's coming out for spring, mate? Did you just said the double IPA yeah, coming out? Yeah, we've got out? double IPA coming out. We have a hazy pale coming out in a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to try my hand at a few different sours. We've got the, the rice from Galaxy at the moment. Yeah. Um, um, but I'm going to try um, some things like apricot, peach, balina vice, yep. and things like that. Stuff that I like to drink as the weather gets warmer. Oh, really? So. I was going to say, how do you go with sours? Because I'm not, me and sours don't really agree. I'm learning. I love the Little Bang sours, though. I say that out. Oh, their face inverter they're is my gentle. favorite. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's the, like most sours I'm not a big fan of, but the face inverter I just absolutely love. Um, I'm learning sours, so all the sours we make are not face inverted, they're not puckering. One of the brewers told me that a sour beer was created because someone stuffed up and went, oh, let's call it a sour. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it's uh, it's one of those things that I'm definitely getting more and more involved in. Oh, and there you go. Uh, it's probably not gonna be a major part of our business, yep. but I, I certainly like um, some of that summer, summer sour sort of thing. Have you ever stuffed up a batch? Like, I'm guessing you have stuffed up a batch, but like, how much do you make that you got to chuck out then. Do you, you, like, you must start small, like a little one, and go, okay, I'll try how this works. Uh, no, so at the moment we're doing everything in 250 litre batches. So okay. um, at the, at the first time we brew anything, yep. it's in 250 litres, yep. and we live and die by that. Now, as far as, as, far as volume wise, it's low compared to a lot of yep. brewers, particularly even on pilot batches. Um, I mean, for us, the risk is worth the reward. Can you salvage a bad batch? No. No, okay. Uh, what? I ask this to every brewer because some reckon you can. 
You can turn yeah, it into okay. something. So Some reckon you can't. Technically, uh, we had a really good opportunity from uh, one of the brewers of Fox Hat. Yep. Uh, come down here. He, he lives around the corner. Comes yep. in here and drinks. And uh, I usually chew his ear off. Yep. Um, we had a, ba a batch of amber ale that I was making. Not the one that we've got on and tap at the moment. But I made it and something went wrong. Um, it was really tannic and bitter and mm -hmm. it just didn't work out the way I wanted it. Uh, then the guys at the coffee shop, they said, oh, let's throw some coffee at it. Let's see if that oh. fixes it. They just <laughs> threw some coffee at me. We threw it in there and now it just tasted like tannic, bitter coffee. So no better. Um, and he come in and, and we were just talking and I said, oh, I've got this batch we're about to tip down the drain. Yeah. Um, super disappointed. It was my first batch going away. Um, and I was just bummed and he said, oh, let me have a taste of it. No worries. Went and got him a sample out of the yeah. printer. Um, and he had a stout. He had our stout in his hand. Yeah. And he sort of smelt it, tasted it. He said, yeah, that's not very good. And he goes, oh, hang on. Grabs his stout, pours some stout into it, tastes it, hands me the glass. And he goes, there you go, coffee porter. Oh, and, uh, no so, way. So we salvaged that batch by throwing a keg of stout back in with a, a bitter coffee amber. Wow. What did you call that beer? The uh, salvage uh, beer? No, it was Baron One. <laughs> Baron One. Uh, so uh, we... We sold four kegs of that in two weeks. Jesus. It was one of our most popular beers, one of our shortest releases. Yeah. And that's why we brought out the Baron, the coffee porter again. Oh, that this is one clever. I made on purpose. Um, I'm really happy with it. But <laughs> um, but we, we have had a batch here that we've had to tip uh, yeah. and, and pour down the drain, which is really sad. Yeah. Um, but that's what I mean. Everything costs money to you, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, if you have a bad batch, it's going to cost you. Know? In, in reality, Bad batch of beer down the drain costs you a lot less than serving it to people. Shit. Because they go, I'm not going to come back. That would be great. I can That's, understand that. It's yeah. a very quick way to lose staff, uh, to lose patrons, and a very quick way when you're so young and in this as we are. Yeah. A uh, very quick way to just, people just to dismiss. I love you. that story. That is a good. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good yeah. beer creation yeah, story. Shout out to Dylan for helping uh, me out. Ah, reckon. That was, that was fantastic. Where do you stand on seltzers? We're about to, to brew our first one oh, in a small batch. Really? Um, I, I was going to say, don't bring this American gimmick over here. But I, no, every, like Wolf of the Willow started and a couple of others. So they started like, right, everyone enjoy your beer. I like, I I'm just, gonna, I, uh, uh, to me, it's one of those weird drinks. I've never actually had one. Yeah. But we're going to brew 20 litres of it and I'm going to try it. And yeah. if I can have my rules. How do you know what it's going to taste like then? Yeah, we're just going to wing it. Okay. That's kind of what we do. Um, and so. So I do this. Instagram thing, guys. <laughs> just, <laughs> just wing it. it. Um, but I figure a good litmus test is: is um, would you buy it, and would you buy another? Yeah. So we'll sit down and we'll try it. And yeah. We'll do a few different things, and would we buy it? Yeah, sure. Would we buy another? Then it's worth putting on tap. Who's the market for them, anyway? I, I like this is me just generally not knowing who I the market know. is. Okay. I have no idea. Okay. Um, oh, we've had people from all kinds of walks of life okay. coming and asking if we do have a seltzer. It's not really up here. Um, we're in a very interesting uh, area where it's a lot of older families yes. and large blocks, or new families who've taken those large blocks and not oh, been okay. able to put two on them. Okay. So um, they're very polar opposites, yep. um, but we have both come in here. We have them both drink. They just both drink different types of beer. Yep. Um, so I, we'll, I picture this market, and this is just me, just observations like lager drinkers and like traditional absolutely. drinkers. Yeah. You want your English bitters here as well, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we have been asked, if I got a dollar for every time I was asked, do you have a lager? Yeah. We'd have a much bigger brewery really? by now. So, um, and that's okay. We just, yep. we don't serve one now. Um, I don't have the water profile and yep. everything for it. I'm not comfortable enough. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And, yep. and one day we'll make one. Um, but our amber ale is more of British style amber ale, yep. bordering on an English bitter. There you go. Um, yeah. And then uh, we have a lot of a lot of people come in and absolutely love it. We sold a keg in a night. So, um, it's just, our market is weird, it's different, yeah. and I love that about and it. That, and that's why I say, like, I've never said there's a bad beer, I said there's beer's not for me. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the bitters and the lagers. Yeah. But you give me a Pilsner, oof, I mean, yeah. Pilsner might have been light and springy, yeah. give me that any that's, day. That's what I like to drink, and that's yep. what I usually buy. And, you know, back to actually Stone, Stonewood, their Pacific Ale is my yeah. go-to when I oh, purchase beer. Delightful, delightful. So, um, not that I buy beer much anymore. But. Oh, there you go, you wouldn't have to. All right, I'm nearly at the 30 minute mark, I'm gonna cut this interview into two. Thank you, I could talk about you beer all day. Thank Thanks, you much, Brad. Cheers, Cheers, buddy. Cheers, guys, I'll chuck this up soon. Thanks, man. That was fascinating. Yeah, no, it was great. Cheers. I really